By now, it's common knowledge that if you want to cut, you got to eat less. And if you want to bulk, you got to eat more. But what about workouts? What about lifting weights and training? What are the best ways to work out when you're trying to bulk versus when you're trying to cut? That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. We're going to give you the answers by the time it's done. Let's talk about uh, lifting. I'm excited for this, and this episode because, one, this is a bit nuanced. Two, we always get asked this question always. about our programs. Always. What program should I follow yeah. for bulking? What program should I follow if I'm cutting? And it's not as simple as a, like follow this program for a cut, follow this program for a bulk. And so hopefully we do a really good job of answering that question for all the listeners so we can refer to this episode going forward. Well, what's interesting is uh, what we're going to, the information we're going to present is going to be counter to what I think a lot of people believe to be true. Yeah. So let's start with the, uh, the common understanding of a cutting workout versus a bulking workout. Cutting workouts tend to be calorie burners, right? Mm -hmm. You tend to want to say, or you hear high reps, super sets, giant sets, strip sets, short rest periods. Like that's the kind of workout you do when you cut. And then bulking is typically low reps, long rest periods, um, straight sets, right? You don't want to superset. You don't want to do too many exercises in a row. The goal is basically to have a slow workout. Um, and the theory is, well, the first option just burns more calories, makes you sweat. The other one, yeah. you know, you're trying to, I guess, conserve calories and push muscle growth as much as possible. Um, so that is largely a myth. Yeah. All that is largely a myth. Um, now the truth is when we get into rep ranges and we'll talk more about this is that between one to like 25, so like between one rep to 25 rep or so, um, they all build muscle. So, um, they're all going to build muscle. One doesn't necessarily build better than the other. There's a lot of factors you have to take into account before you determine which one works best for building muscle. But the biggest one has to be novelty, I think. Well, I think there's still this common thought that when you decide to go into a cut, let's say, uh, you want to maximize your efforts hundred percent by burning as many calories as possible on top of that. Uh, and so you end up picking a lot of these type of workouts that are just basically like super intense, lots of reps, like yeah. just out to sweat, uh, because the thought process is I'm going to probably burn more fat by doing it this way. Uh, when in fact, uh, nobody brings up the conversation of how can we preserve as much po uh, muscle as possible. Yeah, this this also highlights the importance in, of, of following a structured program because, when you start getting into the all the nuances of like how to to maximize a bulk or how to maximize a cut, and if you're just kind of like throwing exercises and rep ranges and there's no rhyme or reason, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is really tough to do. This is really tough to go. Okay, well, what would be considered a novel stimulus or what is different uh, now that I'm in this cut or this bulk than how I kind of always follow a routine and so. Um, there's, this is where there's lots of value to, okay, I've been trained a very specific way with everything from rest periods to rep ranges to the type of movements I'm doing. And then now I'm transitioning into this cut or bulk and now I'm doing this. Yeah. So let me set that up a little bit, right? So first let's address the, like, I need to burn as many calories as possible if I'm trying to uh, lose weight. And I, 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 by the way, this it makes sense on the surface, right? If you want to lose weight or cut, you have to burn more calories than you take in or take in less calories uh, than you burn. Um, so it makes sense. So then I should move more, right? But here's the problem, and we know this now. Um, aside from the health benefits of, of, of appropriate movement, trying to simply burn more calories is a losing strategy. And the data is pretty clear on this. It's a very ineffective way of getting lean. Now, you'll get an initial effect probably the first three to five weeks. You'll see some positive effects from trying to burn more calories. But very quickly, the body adapts and it either slows its metabolism down through paring muscle down, or this is an interesting one, subconsciously, and they now contract this, your body limits your movement the rest of the day. So they actually find that when people burn more calories in the workouts, they burn less calories hmm. uh, throughout the day. And it's just, you is know. Is that true? I didn't know that's that. A, yeah. And it's really weird. It's like you're standing less, you're bouncing your knee less, you're mm -hmm. less likely to get up and go somewhere. Do you think that's just because it's of the pure mode. exhaustion and fatigue from the workout? You think that's the idea? That's part of it. But then when they'll control for like, okay, it's appropriate. It's literally the body is making you move less. Yeah. 
to try to conserve oh, energy. Oh, interesting. You know, yeah. it's I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the podcast. If I have, it's been a long time. Um, my experience with uh, CrossFit, one of the things that, and I'm, I'm talking early days, this is way before it was popular. It was just and, in Santa Cruz. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. It was just in Santa Cruz. The boxes weren't popping. In fact, I remember we didn't even know what it was, and you had to go online, and you had to look up the, yeah. the workouts and stuff. And uh, I had a couple trainers that were doing it, and it was starting to make its way around the fitness community. And uh, of course, I did some of it. And one of the things when I was doing these workouts was, man, for the next, like, I had to lay down in my office floor for like two hours afterwards. <laughs> and then the rest of the day, like, I was so gassed and spit. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want, I didn't move. Yeah. I wasn't my animated self. I wasn't going, walking around the pit. I wasn't going out on the floor. I was just like, I just, it felt like I needed to recover all day long. I've never really thought about that, like how much of a correlation there is between, you know, too intensive a workout and, too, and driving that too much that it actually has an adverse effect on your neat throughout the rest of the day. It did, I didn't know there was any research. Yeah, there's a lot that. of data around that now. Which oh, is, interesting. Yeah, really interesting because that that's a, that's an extreme example, right? You beat the crap yeah, of out course. Of yeah. But there, even more subtly, your body will just make you move less. And then, of course, the 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 metabolism is very very complex. And your body can become more or less efficient with uh, calorie burn, thus making up the difference. And there's lots of studies that uh, that show this that 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 the whole movement is good for health, but trying to move to lose weight um, without looking at diet and all that other stuff is is a is a total losing battle. Well, I know we've pieced together in the past, uh, like why. I used to give the cue to my client that, hey, when we leave the workout, you want to feel you have more energy than yes. you left, which is really counter to how we started the first decade of our career, mm -hmm. right? Like it was crush your client. Yes. They were wobbling out. They were exhausted versus now what I was looking for, my client would be done and be like, yeah, I, I feel really good. I feel like I could do more. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Perfect. <laughs> let's let's save that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and looking back now, I think you, it is, you, you started to piece together one, when you hit that sweet spot, you weren't overtraining to them to where they were just trying to recover from how, how sore they were. And then two, they probably left the day and did more activity and stuff in turn helping their weight loss journey. Right. Now, here's the interesting thing is that you would think that cutting and bulking are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Like if there was a spectrum of goals, it would be bulking on one end, cutting on the other end. But that's not really a good representation because look, here's the deal. The goal of bulking, the, the real goal of bulking, is to gain as much lean body mass as possible. I don't know too many people that bulk trying to gain body fat. I mean, maybe that's someone's goal, but generally speaking, when someone's trying to bulk, what they're talking about is, I want to gain muscle. I'm not trying to gain body fat. I'm trying to gain muscle. So as much lean muscle as possible. Cutting is trying to lose as much body fat as possible while maintaining or keeping muscle. I don't know very many people who go on a cut to try to intentionally lose muscle. So the truth is cutting and bulking have one thing uh, very strongly in common. They have one thing in common. They both want muscle. prioritize yeah. muscle. Yeah. So the goal of cutting and bulking is actually very similar. They're both trying to prioritize muscle. One is just trying to pack on as much as possible. The other one's trying to keep it uh, through these, this fat loss process. All right, everybody, today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic, the original MAPS programs. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. You gonna do that right now? <laughs> <laughs> Here, take this down so I can do this, okay? You ready? You ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> today's, <laughs> all right. All right, everybody, today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. This is the original MAPS program. You can win it by doing this. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, Black Friday right now, 60% off all programs, 60% off all bundles. Everything's on sale, it's crazy. This only happens once a year. If you wanna take advantage, you gotta click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You know, that's part of the problem though, Sal, is that that is the way it's supposed to be, but it hasn't been delivered that way. Right. Like cutting has always been this like, oh, you build all this muscle and then now, now, and you put on some body fat along the way. Okay, now let's cut. And so it's like 
cut the calories, do the cardio, do the high intensity workouts to try and slim down, not realizing that you aren't trying to prioritize muscle and yet you should be because you're in a calorie deficit. That's right. Cause uh, it's about the scale at that point, right? What does the scale say? Now we've, you know, we've talked about this uh, numerous times on the show and I think that the average consumer is starting to become hip to this and that body composition is more important, right? Uh, weight on the scale only tells you total mass. doesn't tell you how much body fat you have or how much lean body mass you have. I mean, I, you know, you could take a 200 pound six foot male at 10% body fat or a 200 pound six foot male at 20% body fat. They look radically different. I mean, dramatically different. The 200 pound 10% body fat male has a much smaller waist, much tighter physique, you know, obviously good shape, good definition. Whereas a 20% is going to have a belly. Isn't going to look the same. Isn't going to perform the same. The same is true for women. You could have a 100 and you know 40 pound female at 20 percent body fat, or a 140 pound female at 30 percent body fat. Both of them, let's say five six, and they look radically different because it's about body composition. Not to mention, of course, more muscle is healthier. It's functional, meaning you 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 need it to move, so you move better. Uh, it's a storage vessel for sugar. Uh, in the form of glycogen. So it helps with insulin sensitivity. It helps balance out hormones, speeds up your metabolism. And then of course it just looks a lot better. So it's really about body composition. So the goal with cutting should be get rid of the body fat, not muscle. You get rid of muscle, you're slowing metabolism down. And oftentimes what happens is you end up the same body fat percentage, just a smaller, weaker version of yourself. Like if you lose 10 pounds, half is muscle, half is fat. You're kind of in the same place you were before. You're just smaller with a slower metabolism. You might actually, in fact, probably in a worse place because you've just got rid of some really good protective uh, tissue. Um, here's the difference between bulking and cutting. And, and it's important to understand that this is really the difference. It's about the food intake, right? Mm. Bulking, in order to gain as much lean body mass as possible, you want to be in a calorie surplus. You have to have additional calories that your body can use to turn into new muscle tissue. Cutting, you have to be in what's called a calorie deficit. You have to eat less calories in your burn because your body tries to make up the difference by burning calories off itself by burning its body fat. So that's really the big difference between the two is that one is a bulk with calories surplus. The other, the cut, is in a deficit. Other than that, there's, there's no difference. Now, we're going to talk about workouts, and this is where it's going to get really interesting because mm -hmm. – then people say, well, okay, well, then do the workouts matter at all? Um, yes, they yeah. do, but we have to look at the most important factor when we're looking at what's going to build the most muscle and what's going to preserve the most, the most muscle. muscle. It's the same answer, by the way. Yeah. It, same it answer. Looks, it looks almost identical, and I'm glad you specified the difference between the two. It is all nutritionally is what you got to consider the most when approaching it. The training itself – Again, it's going to look pretty similar when it comes to because you're trying to build muscle. It's the same process. Yeah, it's identical. The if somebody came to me and they were wanting to go into a bulk, I would ask them what they had been doing currently for their training program, and then the programming that I would change for them to put them in a bulk is the same thing. If they came to me, told me about their programming, and said they wanted to go into a cut, I would still change make the change. Yes, mm -hmm. I would still make that change because what you're so, what you're referring to is the the novelty effect. Yeah. Of in the context of appropriate workout programming, meaning nothing too crazy or dangerous or stupid. Okay, so in the box of all appropriate workouts for your body, name one factor that will stimulate muscle, which means it'll protect muscle, keep it as well, or build it. One factor that's more important than novelty, right? There's none. It's these are the newbie gains. So for anybody who's you know, if you're watching or listening to this, and you you remember what it was like when you first started working out. You kind of built muscle and strength no matter what you did. Mm -hmm. Your workout probably wasn't even that good, but you went back. I mean, I remember what this was like as a kid. Every time I went back to work out, I could add a rep or two reps to every exercise every single time. That's from that. That's those are those newbie gains, but novelty will induce that as well. So changing the workout into something different, you get a nice little boost of muscle building stimulus. And then I've, I've experienced this so many times throughout my lifting career, going from low volume to high volume to low volume to high rep to low rep to new exercises, each time switching, each time noticing new gains, and of course, each time falling for the trap of thinking, 
this is the way I should trade all yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, we'll get into the difference of like, um, in terms of when you have more calories versus when you are, you know, restricting calories, like energy balance there, and yeah. like what types of workouts might be a little more suited, you know, and di those different pursuits. I mean, they're definitely that novelty factor is a big factor. So whatever you haven't really done in a bit to, to kind of switch over, it's usually a good time uh, to introduce that. So that way it gives you that sort of opportunity for your muscles to respond. Well, and, and novel can be a bit nuanced too, right? Because uh, there's a lot of things that you can do in the, within the workout that make it uh, it's somewhat novel, right? So just by switching from a machine to free weights could do that or from a front squat to a back squat. Personally, <clears throat> when I switch a client into a bulk or cut, I want to evaluate their training modality, the lifts they, they, they primarily do, the rep ranges that they're currently at. And I actually want to look at the other end of the spectrum, like something that's really unique compared to that. I like, totally. to, I like to go... Yeah, it's really totally novel, different. right? Yeah. Like, because one might go like, "Oh, well, I've been doing, you know, the 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 barbell back squat, and oh, so I'm doing rope press downs. Now I'm gonna do straight yeah. bar press downs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. They'll, and so they'll they'll do do something that is really sim in the same vein, and or they may even keep the same rep ranges that they're they're currently mm -hmm. in. Like, I want to shake it up completely, and I, I'll use maps as an example since most people in here understand maps programs. But if I had someone who was following like a, a MAPS anabolic program, then taking them to something like a performance or like a MAPS strong or a MAPS yeah. OCR or something that's a or really power lift to symmetry. Or something right, right. Like yeah. That. You're power lifting. You were a power lifter. So you follow that protocol. So then, yeah, taking to a, a symmetry or a MAPS split type of a program. It's it's so different. The exercise selection is different. The way the, mu the muscles are being organized and hit are different. Like everything about it, there's enough to be like, tons of novel stimulus in addition to this new diet that we're about to go on is either one going to preserve as much muscle as we possibly can because you're sending a signal to build more muscle or if you're in a bulk it's going to add more muscle because it's a new stimulus that's right by the way with the diet i mean i, I know we've talked about this before you still want to you want to hit your protein targets with both yep. options so one is low calorie one is high calorie <clears throat> hit your target body weight and protein uh, with both of them, that's a constant. Would, would you make an argument that it's more crucial on one than the other? Cutting. Yeah. It's more yeah. important to hit protein on on a cut because you're constantly fighting yeah. being catabolic. Uh, and, and, and the studies on this are... So this, here's what's interesting. Study on Studies on bulking, if the, calorie, if the calories are the same, one is like you hit your, your body weight and protein. The other one is less than that. Maybe not too much less, but less than that. The difference in muscle growth really there isn't that big of a difference. There's somewhat of a difference. You can argue maybe, but it's not a huge difference. Cutting, big difference. You get two same calorie diets, both a deficit. One is high protein. One is not high protein. The high protein loses more body fat and keeps more muscle. It's significant. So with the cut, in fact, with cutting, I know this isn't a diet episode, but with cutting, I would make my clients try to hit more than their target yeah. body weight and protein because I knew they would miss sometimes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they were more likely to hit, those, to average hit those numbers. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you were probably, Adam, when you competed, I bet you were more uh, anal about protein in your cut. I actually didn't even have to track in a bulk because I was, I was so over consistently. Oh, so like when I was, when I was bulking, when you're eating 4,500 plus calories, I mean, you're I hit 200 something. Grams. That's right. I hit 200 by almost default. Right. Like, especially since I was doing most of that in really clean whole foods. Right. So I'm definitely hitting my protein intake when I was cutting you. Yeah. Especially as I mean, you take a guy like, so at the it, peak bulk, I would be hitting 5,000 calories. The lowest of low cuts, I was hitting 2,200 or so calories. That's a big drop. So as I started to get lower and lower in those calories, I really had to prioritize protein. So it became important that I tracked everything because I was like, oh, I could easily with only eating 2,000, 2,200 calories could, it could miss. So, and I think that's what it is. I think what people go, oh, I eat enough protein because I, because every meal has it and they're used to being in like a surplus. And then they go to a cut and it's like, you're, you're cutting your calories back. And if you're not really focusing on hitting that target real easily, can you start to miss that? And then you're already in a catabolic state. That's right. And then, you know, back to the workout, you what you want to do with both remember both of them have this in common prioritizing muscle you want to use the very powerful novelty signal to induce that change which means the workout's going to be different i remember some of the biggest ones for me 
um, when I first started working out where I noticed this were, I went from a typical bodybuilding style workout. So I first started working out when I was a kid. So it was high volume, tons of sets per body part, got great gains in the beginning, of course, plateaued real hard. Then I went to this, like go to failure one or two sets per body part, super less uh, volume, lower volume. And my body just responded. I had another experience like that later when I was reading flex magazine, there was a bodybuilder in there. He talked about how he always did uh, 15 to 20 reps. And at the time it was said that, you know, low reps is what built the most muscle. So I was always six reps, six, eight reps. Mm -hmm. Well, this bodybuilder looked impressive. So of course I did what he said and I got these great, <clears throat> great gains right out the gates. I mean, it was incredible. And then of course that plateaued and that's a lesson that I had to keep learning. But each time it was about that, that novel stimulus. So whatever you're doing now, you want to go and do something different when you switch gears to maximize that novelty effect. Now, that being said, okay. There are strategies here. There are, there, there, with that, all things being equal, low reps and high reps do work better for uh, one of those goals. In other words, cutting and bulking low reps and high reps tends to work better for one or the other. And it's not what you think. A yeah. lot of people think <clears throat> it's the high reps with the cut, with the, with cutting because it burns mm -hmm. more calories and low reps with bulking because you're lifting heavier and you're stronger. Now I get that psychologically. So psychologically, I don't want to discount this. Mm. Mentally speaking, it is hard to go low reps when you're cutting because you're going to see yourself get weaker. It just this, you just, yeah. you just, your weights go down. It could mess with your head. So if you can't get around that, then forget what I'm about to say. It's an ego check. Yeah. But if you can get around that and you can organize your workouts so that the novelty, you can get, you can make the workout novel and you can choose one or the other low reps are better for cutting high reps are better for bulking. So I experienced, <coughs> I experienced both of the, both of these, uh, during the time that I was competing and I, and I, and I play with both and I, and I, I actually would say that when I was competing and I was measuring and tracking and every calorie and even calorie burn, so I was tracking steps, everything like an extra, you know, 20 calories or 30 calories that I could burn, uh, would help me in my pursuit because I was tracking everything. So I felt that the in the competitive world, it was uh, equal to me as far as what I thought was better. In the real world, where I'm not measuring and tracking every burn, every other night, I find this strategy that you find to be way more successful. So I when you're when you're as meticulous as I was for competing, uh, I could go either way on this. Did you make up the difference. Or? Yeah, that's right. So I could go either way, but. In the real world where I'm like, I'm not tracking, paying attention to it, I find it easier to just focus on lifting heavy and low reps, mainly because when you're in like a phase phase three of MAPS aesthetic and you've been in a caloric deficit for three, oh. four weeks, it <clears throat> is tough to be super setting and short rest periods and that much volume. Yeah. It's exhausting. And so one of the perks of lift doing like a MAPS anabolic, say phase one in a cut is yeah okay i'm not going to be as strong i'm not hitting prs but i don't really give a shit about that anyways the nice part is i get long rest periods mm -hmm. get long rest periods and then even when i have to go i only got to go for five to six reps i found that much easier to like get up for those five to six reps and then i get to relax and give myself that breather in between i found it easier on a cut to oh. maintain the muscle than i did well, on the super less set. calories literally means less energy and uh, that also means less resources for recovery. <laughs> high reps, high rep workouts, when you're looking at 15 reps or 20 reps even, um, are higher volume. Now, people are going to, people don't understand this because they'll say, well, I'm doing the same amount of sets. Well, look, three sets of five reps <sighs> with 200 pounds is lower volume than three sets of 15 reps with, a, a, you know, 100 pounds or 150 pounds. Even though it's less weight, because you're doing so many reps, the volume is much higher and it's harder to recover from. It's a fact. Go do one set of yeah, two reps in the squat, taxing. then go do one set of 40 reps of squat. Tell me which one yeah. is harder to recover from. So when your calories are low, the, the, the consideration that I found to be best was my calories are low. I'm more likely to overtrain, more likely to not have enough energy, more likely to get sick, all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to drop the the volume. I'm going to drop the reps and that's going to allow my body to recover better, 
feel better and deal with the lower calories. And in fact, this was totally true. The leanest that I could ever get when I was able, when I was doing this right, man, my reps were like three to five. And uh, I felt amazing. In the past, I always thought it was high rep supersets for cutting. And when I would do that, I would find myself just burnt out or I'd get sick and it just didn't work. No, I think it's important for the audience to understand that there is a um, order of operation here or or what is takes a higher priority. Meaning if you just came out of a high or low rep phase and then you're deciding to go in a cut, Different, yeah. a novel stimulus will trump what we're saying right now. Right. So I'm that, saying if you could plan it out. That's right. Yeah. So I just it, that's why you got to know that, right? So it's so cuz what some people will take is like, "Oh, wow, I'm about to start a cut, then I guess I should the guys think I should do low rep." But if you've been doing low rep, say for the last, you know, 4 or 5 6 weeks, yeah, it's not that the, novel. The, exactly. Then going to higher higher rep being a novel stimulus trumps what we're saying right now. So totally. in a perfect world, if you want to test that out, then you stay in a calorie maintenance or surplus while you're doing high rep, and then you transition into the uh, the cut, and then you also transition into the low rep. Yep. But if you've already been there, then again, it, the the transitioning to the other rep range, uh, because it's more of a novel stimulus, will trump what we're saying right Same now. thing with total volume in terms of sets and frequency. Like when you're adding more workload to your body, it, and think about this, it makes sense. Okay. I know that people, again, they think they're, they're stuck on the calorie burn model here, but let's just forget that for a second. And remember that that's actually a waste of time to try and even do that to lose, to, to get leaner through calorie burn. Let's forget that for a second. Consider that your, the, the, the amount of energy you have to, uh, to perform a workout the amount of energy that you have to recover from and adapt to a workout is higher when your calories are higher. What does that mean? That means I can get away with more. Okay. In extreme cases, when you look at like high, high level athletes who train ridiculous amounts of time, sports where perfect technique and form are crucial, like swimming at the Olympic level. Uh, if you look at like competitive swimmers, Swimming is so technical, like one slight deviation in technique will make you lose because you're in the water, right? So there's a lot of things working against your body. Look at Michael Phelps, for example. He was training for hours and hours and hours a day. The guy was eating so many calories all day long so that he could perform. If you were working out that much and you cut your calories, you're dead, mm -hmm. right? So bulking, just the essence of bulking is extra nutrients, extra calories, extra carbs, fats, you know, more energy. This is when higher volume, higher frequency, harder workouts make sense. Not when you're cutting. When you're cutting, you're already putting yourself at a stress. Mm -hmm. You're already less, not only are you low nutrients in terms of macronutrients, you're also low micronutrients. So that's a stress. But now you're also trying to work out. And what a lot of people do is work out harder when they're trying to cut because they, they think to themselves, I'm burning calories. It's no wonder people get ill uh, often when they're doing a cut and they're working out this way or they burn themselves out. So again, the, the, you're, you know, I'm glad you made that point, Adam. Novelty trumps everything that we're talking about. But if you could plan it out to where you're like, okay, I'm going to cut in the summer. We're in the winter now. Plan it out so that the novel stimulus by the time you're ready to cut is a low rep, low volume style of training and your cut will be so much more successful. Same thing with the bulk. Plan the novel bulk workout to be the one that's the hardest with the most volume because you have the most nutrients. You know, that that the saying that I hate, right? There's no such thing as overtraining, just under eating. The reason why I hate it so much is because it's false, but also because there's a kernel of truth in it. Uh, you are more likely to overtrain your calories are low, mm -hmm. and you are less likely to overtrain when your calories are high. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's the opposite. So taking it back to like uh, MAPS Anabolic or I mean MAPS programming in general, uh, I would love to see someone bulk, and I've done this and I think it's great, is to bulk in like a MAPS Aesthetic Phase 3 yeah, and then transition to a MAPS Anabolic Phase 1 in the cut. I think that right Well, here's is what's beautiful about, these, about our MAPS program. So if you follow our MAPS programs, <clears throat> we lay them out in a particular order. But here's a little secret. The order in some of them doesn't matter necessarily. And some of them it does. Some of them doesn't. The, the original, like if you go like MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic uh, Split, I think is like this, you can switch the order. So in other words, if it's novel for you to go high, you know, high rep, low, short rest periods, 
start maps anabolic phase three, go to phase two and then phase one mm -hmm. through your yeah, program. I think I only the off the only off the top of my head, I would say performance and power left are the two more that, linear, right? Yes, are like the only two that would like would probably be disrupted if you went reversing yeah, it. You, yeah, it, it did give it a totally different experience. I know, like strong, we sort of flipped it on its head a bit and start out with like high volume and yeah. yeah. More, but even yeah. that, you but could go the other opposite you direction. You could flip with, that. Yeah. yeah, and it'd be okay. It'd be I fine. can only I, for sure power lift. You don't want to do reverse because no, no you, you scale that's very. Mm -hmm pragmatic and specific so power lift you you wouldn't want to jump around for phases. sure maps anabolic for sure you could flip yeah yeah and, and aesthetic yeah. you could yeah. easily do aesthetic that way i would make the case for a split that way most of the programs you could run you could run i've recommended that way before mm -hmm. i've recommended to people in fact uh after katrina's pregnancy when she first did starter when I when I took her to anabolic i actually started her in phase three. Oh wow and the logic behind that was she only did like, I don't remember, like four to six weeks of starter after uh, back pregnancy. She started to feel really good. And then what I wanted her, to, and she wanted to get back into anabolic. I said, okay, you can run anabolic, but I don't want you to go to phase one because I don't want you to risk pushing the weight too much. So putting her in a phase three, yeah. force her higher reps so she wouldn't be loading the bar that much. I just wanted her core to, mm -hmm. to get all of her strength back before she risked a heavy weight like that. So I've definitely even recommended going in, you know, depending on the situation of running that program backwards. Now, so. special consideration uh, is your, the psychological aspect of workouts. The hardest thing for people when they're cutting, for example, is to watch the weight on the bar go down. Yeah. So this is a case for going higher reps because mm -hmm. when you're higher reps, short rest periods, you're going to go lighter anyway. No matter yeah. what, you're going to go much lighter. You're already reducing. So it. if that's you, if you're that guy or girl where you're like, oh, you know, I want to do the low reps, but I'm, I want 15 pounds down and that's going to cause you to do stupid stuff. Yeah. Then maybe, you know, the psychology always trumps all the mm -hmm. other stuff, by the way. The, the mental, the, you know, what works for you mentally is what's going to work for you, period, end of story. So that's one uh, thing to pay attention to is, uh, is this going to mess with my head? It used to mess with my head. I've been doing this so long now, I'm okay with going lighter on heavy days and all that <laughs> stuff. But when I was a kid, if I saw the weight go down a little bit, oh, when it, yeah. I just got out of the cut is what I would do. That's why I used to do like unilateral training. And I know we've actually like talked to some callers that called in uh, to do the same. It's an opportunity for you to kind of do something you would never do otherwise. Uh, and, and in that situation, you're going to be moving lighter weight anyway. So, and you'll be focused on building muscle, but just uh, in a unilateral fashion. So there's, there's ways that you can kind of uh, deal with that fact that like, if your ego is kind of getting in the way of it, we can kind of figure out a different plan. Well, now you guys are highlighting why we've never answered this question. That's right. Because we've now said two things, uh, both novelty and psychology. Sounds like it's contradicting. And the, so, yeah, right. Yeah. And the psychology trumps what we're saying as far as rep ranges, volume, and so like that. And that's true. And so, therefore, there's always an exception to the rule to literally everything we're saying right now. Mm -hmm. Because the most ideal plan in my mind might be, oh, we're going to bulk in phase three of MAPS aesthetic, and then we're going to go to a cut in MAPS anabolic phase one. But if one, you weren't, you were doing the opposite of that heading into that. That wouldn't be true because it would no longer be novel. And I wouldn't want you doing the same thing when I transition or two, if that psychologically fucks with you so much, it discourages you that you don't want to do the workout or follow the diet because you're getting weaker Then now as a coach and a trainer, I adjust that. This is why we never have specifically said, and this is also why if you ever get marketed to that this program's for cutting and this program's yeah. it's bullshit yeah. because it's not Pure taking marketing. it's not taking into account the individual on what are they currently doing right now because that matters more and then two psychologically how does that way of training affect that person positively or negatively <laughs> because as a coach and a trainer I'm actually going to factor those two things in first and then from there, I'm going to adjust the other things. Well, I think the most important thing to take away is is the following. Uh, strength training is always about building muscle. Yeah. Always. Whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to gain weight, get strong, whatever. Strength training is about building muscle. Why? Because if you're trying to bulk, obviously you want to gain muscle. If you're trying to cut, you want to keep muscle. And what keeps the muscle is what's going to build it. So the goal should be to do the workout that's the best muscle building workout whether you're cutting or bulking. Look, if you like the show, 
head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. We have quite a few of them there and they can help you with almost any help, health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. <laughs> 